Um, it's a big day tomorrow down at Amy Park in Melbourne where the Storm take on the Canberra Raiders. And it's a big day because Cameron Smith will be further immortalised at Amy Park with the unveiling of the Eastern stand in his name prior to the game against the Raiders. The Melbourne Storm are also renaming their Player of the Year award after the Premiership winning captain. And I thought, well, who better to speak to this afternoon than the coach Craig Bellamy, who we haven't caught up with for a little while. And we've got him on the line right now. G'day, Craig. Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Mate, really well, mate. Good to talk to you as always. Um, it's going to be a big day for the club down there tomorrow. And I would have thought a, a fitting honour for Cameron Smith, who did so much for the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Um, you know, it's a big honour to obviously name uh, you know, the, the Eastern Stand um, after uh, after Cameron and also um, you know, changing the the name of the Player of the Year to the Cameron uh, Smith um, medal as well. So, yeah, I, I think it um, uh, just goes to show or represents, you know, the the effect and, um, you know, the things that he does for the club and, and you know, those some of those traits he's embedded into the club and, and the club's, you know, all, all the better for it. Obviously, Cameron Smith, as a premiership winning captain, has done so much. He's now doing some wonderful work in the media. Um, you saw him, what he did with the Queensland Origin team as an assistant coach. I'm intrigued, Craig, given that, you know, you, you coached both Billy and, and Cameron. Um, does it surprise you that they've had success with the, the Queensland Maroons on Wednesday night? Oh, no. No, it doesn't surprise me at all. They're both, um, they know as much about the game um, like uh, in on in an on field sense, as as anyone that that I would know or have ever been involved uh, in the game, and um, like so they're both very, um, you know, they've, they've picked up a lot, obviously, in their time, you know, with their playing and how you know all the levels that they have played at, and you know, for a, a very long time, and they're both um, very. You know, very smart guys in their own right. But the other thing, they're, they're very passionate about what they do as well. And, um, you know, the one thing that, you know, I would have known, you know, when they were appointed, um, you know, to the Queensland job, that there, there wouldn't be any stones unturned, um, you know, to, to get the best result that uh, they were capable of. Yeah, Belly Ake, it's Jay Moz, mate. You must be happy now that uh, Origin's over. You get back Munster, who's probably been locked in a hotel room. He can't wait to play. <laughs> you get Felice back. Uh, is Harry Grant going to back up, or was he uh, a bit under the weather from too much partying? Yeah, I, I, I think he got a little bit of a knock in the game too, Josh, but I yeah, think right. um, probably his worst trait was probably uh, the hangover, I think. He <laughs> came in a little bit shaggy head on uh, on Friday, so... Um, he, he done a little bit today at train. Um, he's, he's got a little bit of an issue there, um, you know, where Billy took him off there. I think in the last seven or eight minutes, he got a bit of a knock. But um, he, he got through a little bit today, so hopefully we'll just see how he pulls up from that. But uh, we're hopeful that you know he'll be able to back up and play, you know, a, a bit of time uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, but as you say, you know, Munster, you know, he would have been. Kind of climbing the walls, being locked in a room for <laughs> six days. I'm glad I wasn't there with him. But um, yeah, but uh, he's he he trained really well this morning. He, he wasn't, uh, you know, he he wasn't ill with uh, the the COVID at all. Actually, to be quite honest, he uh, um, he didn't have um, you know too many symptoms at all. So um, he's come through today, and um, uh, yeah, he, he trained really well. So he'll certainly back up for us. Billy Akins, Gal, mate, you've had a couple of losses in a row, which is uh, very unstorm like, and there's been questions asked about the Melbourne Storm. Are they slipping? I'm just wondering, uh, have you changed anything at training or addressed it at all over the past couple of weeks or this week? No, Gal, it's, you know, like I say, we've sort of been beaten two and three times before, but I, I think the, the main point, and, you know, probably what you, you're, you know, trying to say in a nice way is that, you know, it's just the way we lost, to be quite honest. Um, you know, we certainly have lacked some energy, and um, you know, well, you know, we, we all know we're, we're down a little bit in, in, in our troops, but um, you know, that's no excuse for you know not being able to do the the effort there as well, and, and that's where we're really fallen down in the last two weeks. Um, we've certainly you know played a, a couple of good teams there, and obviously you know your Sharks were were exceptional last week against us, but you know we expect better, 
Um, I think, you know, we had that game against the Sharks was a Thursday night game and we're playing Sunday this week. So that gives us a little bit of an opportunity this week to give the players some time off. And um, the rep players that went over to New Zealand, we give them a little bit you know, more time as well. So hopefully that helps freshen us up and helps us, um, you know, get really keen for our footy again. And, um, you know, I think we had a bit more spring in our step, you know, during the week um, this week. And hopefully you know, we can show that tomorrow. Craig, it really was on Melbourne like though, wasn't it? The last couple of performances, because you, you just there was no energy and there was no spring in the step, as you said. I'm interested in what what you had to say to Brandon Smith with regards his performance in the three weeks he got. Did you have a, did you have to have a chat to him, or did you just tell him to you know buckle up or something? Yeah, I'll, again, yeah, you know, we know that's not not acceptable. Um, you know, in our game, you know, what happened? I think he, he was a bit frustrated he thought he should have got a penalty out of that and um but you know I think part of that frustration was obviously with how the team was playing I think probably how he was playing you know as individuals you know as, as just you know you guys have sort of pointed out you know we haven't uh aimed up the way that we should have aimed up and um you know I, I, I didn't have too much of a chat to, to Brandon he knows that that's not acceptable um and um, hopefully it'll be a, a learning lesson for him and, you know, for all, all players in the game, to be quite honest. And, Craig, one last one. Uh, Tim Sheens this week's announced he's going to return to the head coaching ranks. He's 71 Sheens. Yeah, I know your future's been up in the air for a little while. You've now decided that you're going to go around for a, another year, given Sheens is going around again, mate. You've got, what, another <laughs> 20 years left in you, have you, Craig? <laughs> Mate, I don't know. I don't know what Tim, Tim's thinking, actually. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's putting himself in for. It. I think all he does. He does, does know, but um, obviously, um, you know, he's come back from England and um, um, he's got the itch again. So, um, yeah, like he, he's, a, he's a wonderful coach, Tim. Um, you know, he, he's a wonderful person as well. And, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, he'll do a good job there. Um, as I said, I, I don't think I'd be uh, putting my hand up after a couple of years <laughs> off and I'm 71. But, um, uh, like I say, he, he'll know what, he, what he's in for. I think he'll have a lot of good good help around him as well and um, uh, just wish him all the best and um, as I said uh, hopefully he realises what he's got himself in for. <laughs> good on you mate well good luck tomorrow it's a big day for the club the Melbourne Storm taking on Canberra at Amy Park where the Cameron Smith stand will be unveiled and of course your Player of the Year award will now be known as the Cameron Smith Player of the Year award down there at the Storm always great to catch up Craig good luck tomorrow no, thanks a lot, Mark. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chat to you soon. There he is, Craig Bellamy, the Melbourne Storm coach. And, you know, we, we often talk about people needing to join clubs as NRL members. Well, what about this? Melbourne Storm's exceptional membership growth in 2022 has created yet another record, the highest membership tally ever recorded by an NRL club, with more than 10,000 new members signing on this year. Storm's membership count now sits at 37,237, surpassing the previous record held by the Broncos, who had 36,420 members in the 2018 season. Last month, Storm became number one in the NRL for membership for the first time, and the club is now within sight of its target of 40,000 members in 2022. That's some impressive numbers, isn't yeah, it, it is, fellas, isn't it? for the Melbourne Storm? They've, they've done a terrific job. You know the thing about them? They've been competitive since day one, you know, and I'd like to think that the you know, the same will apply to the Dolphins, but I've got my doubts about that. But they mm. have been... They, like, they made their grand final, didn't they, in their second mm. year? Yep. It's a, that's an incredible and performance. And they're competing against AFL down there. They, yeah. You know, that's the main sport, so... Yeah, you know, their 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 AFL clubs can have somewhere up to eighty to a hundred thousand. So like forty thousand, taking away forty thousand from AFL in Melbourne is massive, and it's on the back of that success that they've had. Good on them. Good on them, and great to catch up with Craig Bellamy.